Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, maybe you've experienced it in your life. It's kind of a profound thing to see if you have seen it. Uh, it's the first time that a child opens their eyes. Okay, uh, so if you've ever been a part of the birth of a, of a child uh, and held the child and uh, seen them open their eyes for the first time. It's a very kind of profound moment uh, in, I think, the life of any human to kind of get to see that, actually. And I remember very, very well almost all of the times uh, that my children, after they were born, Jack, Wesley, and Isla, first opened their eyes. And I think... Maybe Jack was the only one who didn't do this. But Wesley and Isla both, first time they opened their eyes was at the voice of who? Their mom. Their mom, right? And that's, that is not uncommon, actually. Uh, that a child who, uh, who has been born, I remember very clearly with Isla, she was lying on the bed, and, uh, and Lisa had moved over to the bed and sat down with her, and she said, Hi, baby. And eyes open, looking at, uh, at her mother, as if she sort of like had known her all along, actually. And in many ways, she had. There's, there's, there's a lot of good research that says that uh, a mother's voice to a child, uh, to an infant, right after they're born, is almost immediately recognizable. Because for the last nine months or so, that child has been listening to... Uh, the kind of muffled echoes of her mother or his mother speaking inside of the womb so that when that child comes out, the voice that they recognize more than any other voice is the voice of their mother. And it kind of proceeds like as life goes on actually too. There's something about when you hear your mom's voice even at a distance or in a crowd that all of a sudden, boom, you're looking, where's my mom at? You know, I know my children uh, that we can be doing the most entertaining thing in the world inside my house. I can have all three of them just enjoying something uh, extremely, you know, just totally engaged in something. And Lisa can walk in the door and say, hey guys, and boom, they're to the door over to see her, right? Running to hang on to her leg because the voice of mom is very, very powerful, right? That's a good thing that, to think about on Mother's Day is, is the power of a mom's voice. I think I'm looking at some of you and I th I'm thinking that you're imagining maybe the negative power of your mom's voice too when you get in trouble. <laughs> you think, oh yeah, mom's voice, <laughs> powerful. But there's something, there's something so telling about the fact that a child, an adult, a youth can hear the voice of their mom and say, oh, pick it out of a crowd. That's my mom talking, right? We've all kind of experienced that in our lives. Well, it's a very similar thing uh, when Jesus talks about himself as Lord and as shepherd, okay? So he says this in John chapter 10, verse 27. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. They know me, I know them, and they follow me. Okay, kind of the same idea as a mother, just as a mother can call her children, can speak to them, and they know them. Jesus says, similarly, my voice works like that among those who believe and follow me. That they hear my word, they hear, uh, they hear my voice, and they know it, kind of inherently in their own hearts, that that is the voice of their Savior. So I want to just think about this verse, and we'll think about a couple other verses that follow it, but this verse in particular, what it means to know the voice of the shepherd, okay? Know the voice of your Lord and Savior, and how you come to know it, right? Because it's, it's not always easy to know and discern the voice of God in your own life, okay? So how do we come to know the good shepherd and to know his voice inside of our hearts? Okay? These, I'm just going to run through these. Um, these are different ways that I think that we as believers and as people can come to know the voice of the Lord inside of our hearts. Okay? And these are all scripture reasons that I'll talk about in a moment. Okay? We can know the voice of the shepherd by being surrounded by it, by being taught it, by retelling it, by memorizing it, by singing it, 
and by following it. Okay? So the first one. This is, a, this is a very scriptural principle. When God first gives his people his word in the book of Deuteronomy, teaches them like his laws and his precepts, and he gives this instruction about it. He says, these are my commandments that I give to you today, and they are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the roads, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Right? Now you can take that very literally and you know, walk around with a head strap across your head with the word of God on it. But that's not the idea that God is getting at when he's talking to his people. He's saying, surround yourself with the word of God, right? Write it on the mirrors of your bathroom, right? Write it, uh, write it on, on, on cards that you keep in your car, right? Talk about it when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at evening. You want to know the voice of the shepherd? Surround yourself with the word of God. I remember once I, uh, I stayed at, uh, at this monastery in, uh, for a couple of days in Washington. It was an Orthodox monastery. And when you go to a monastery, you kind of get thrown into the mix there of everyday life. And I remember being so struck by how much the Word of God just sort of saturated everything they did. Like every couple hours, they were gathering to pray and to sing and to read the Word of God. And if you stayed there for a whole week, you would read through the entire book of Psalms, right? Just, just in kind of everyday patterns talking about it. It completely surrounded you with the Word of God. Right? And it becomes kind of a beautiful thing. At first, it's strange. But after a day or so, you, uh, you start to think, wow. It's just, like, it's just kind of echoing all around me. Uh, the, the beauty of the Word of God. If we want to know the voice of the shepherd, I would implore you to do this, to find ways to just fit in the Word of God to your life, whether it's written, whether it's read, whether it's sung, whether it's proclaimed in your families, whatever. You're listening to sermons, all of these things, right, are, are ways that we can surround ourselves with the Word of God. And we learn, just kind of implicitly, the same way a child does in their mother's womb, learn the voice of the shepherd, right, just because you're surrounded by it. So that when God's voice comes, or when the opposite of God's voice comes, a lie from Satan comes, you can say, that is not something that Jesus would say, or that is something that Jesus would say to me. Okay? So we surround ourselves with it. Another thing, teach it. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 says this, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, knowing the voice of their shepherd. Right? If we don't use the word of God to teach, Right? If we don't ask the question, wh how, what does the Word of God instruct me? How does it teach me to live my life? Right? And when I'm not in concert with that, how can I learn to do it better? How can I learn to change and grow in my knowledge and understanding of Scripture? Right? We have to use the Scriptures to teach one another. Right? And that's why you're here today. That's why you come to Bible class. That's why you listen to sermons online. That's why you read your Scriptures in the mornings. Because you're teaching yourself. What is the Word of God? How can I walk in it? How can I believe in it? How can I follow it? And that's how we learn the voice of the shepherd in our lives. is through teaching. Okay? Another thing is retelling it. This is kind of a beautiful one. If you read through the scriptures, there's a whole lot of different ceremonies in the scriptures. And, um, and oftentimes this line will come up. Uh, God will know, they'll, they'll be celebrating some festival feast or something, and uh, God will say this. He'll say, when your children ask you, what does this service mean? You are to reply, in this case, it's the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over our house, uh, houses, the houses of the Israelites in Egypt, right? It's telling and retelling the story of God to your children, right? How do we know the voice of our shepherd? By retelling the story. Oftentimes in, uh, in church, I know I don't get to go to church with my family. I don't get to sit with them very often. As you guys know, I sit here and my kids kind of sit all over the place. Um, 
But when I do sit with them, I, was in a, I, was, I got to be in church with them this last Sunday. And um, whenever they start to get distracted, uh, we play like a little game of I spy. I used to do this to them when they were all little. We play a little game of I spy. And uh, we'll sit together, they'll sit on my lap, and when they start to get fidgety, I'll say, hey, Wesley, can you find me a cross? Okay. And then I'll ask him, hey, what happened on that cross? Can you tell me about that, Wesley? Or I'll say, uh, Jack, can you, can you find me the place where God feeds us? Right. And he'll point up to the altar and say, oh, yeah, communion. Or I'll ask him, can you find a lamb? What does that lamb mean? Right. And it's just all it's doing is asking them to retell the story in their mind. It's just a little game that we play whenever they start to get distracted. Um, and it kind of recalls and retells the story to them. And you should think about this seriously as you kind of go through the church year. Because there's all sorts of stories that we gather for. And you can miss them if you don't, uh, if you don't take it seriously. When you come by Christmas, it can just be all about you know, the presents and the gifts. But you should ask this question. What does this service mean to us? Why do we do this? When Easter comes, why do we do that? When Lent comes, why do we do that? And it's all, the reason, the answer to all of that is so that we can retell the story of God over and over and over again. For what purpose? That we may know the voice of our shepherd, right? Simple as that. You should memorize it. This is another way to know the voice of your shepherd. Um, David says this in Psalm 119. He says, Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. I think it's an interesting thing that he doesn't say, Your word I, uh, I have in my mind. But he says, Your word I have in my heart. Or he doesn't say, Your word is written on paper. Or your word is you know, carved into stone. But he says, No, 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 no. Your word I have treasured and placed in my heart. You want to know the voice of your shepherd? Memorize, inhabit, take that word from the page into your mind and into your heart. I, uh, I heard somebody say once, um, they said, do you know what uh, the distance is between um, heaven and hell or, uh, uh, or, or a, a relationship with God or not? You know what the distance of it is? It's, the, it's about 16 inches. It's the distance between your head and your heart, okay? Because all of us can just sort of like know, oh yeah, the Word of God says this, but to treasure it inside of our hearts, to put faith and hope in it, right? That is the, that's, that's what the voice of the shepherd is calling us to, to trust in the Word of God, to follow it, to live by it, right? To memorize it. Treasure it in your heart. This is a good one too. How do we know the voice of our shepherd? By singing about it. Uh, so the Apostle Paul in Colossians 3.16 says, the, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. I got to tell you that I probably, just as a, uh, as a person, have about as much um, hymnody memorized as I do scripture. And the kind of beautiful thing as you sing and learn uh, the, the songs of the church is that you're shaped in the story of God and in the scriptures, right? If you uh, were to just like open up your hymnals, and you can do this after service if you wish, and go to any one of the hymns in there, you'll see uh, at the bottom they have all of these scripture references that are the scripture references that make the song, right? That all we're doing when we sing the truths of God uh, that we gather and sing together, all we're doing is shaping ourselves in the story of Scripture and in the Word of God. Maybe you don't think about that. Maybe you haven't considered it. But that's what we're doing. We're proclaiming and being shaped in song by the Scripture so that we might know the voice of the shepherd. That's the whole point. Okay? And then this is the last one, to follow it. James tells us, uh, be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word of God and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror, for he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks in, uh, in the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful, uh, a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, 
This one will be blessed in what he does. The whole point of what James is saying is to, to, to know the word of God and not to do it is to deceive yourself about it. So the best way that you can know the voice of the shepherd is by hearing and doing it, right? And he calls us to that. So when Jesus says, uh, my sheep know my voice, now we know that because he's placed his spirit inside of us, but we also know it because... You know, we, we follow and teach it and sing it and meditate on it and memorize it uh, and proclaim it to one another. And that is how throughout your whole life you begin to know in a greater and greater way the voice of the shepherd in your life. And Jesus says these, kind of, uh, these two kind of closing words. He says, I know them and they follow me. And I always think that that's kind of a, a, a beautiful and yet unsettling truth, right? That God knows us. I like the idea that God knows the good things about me, right? The things that are kind of redeemable, the things that are nice and shiny, the great things that I do that, are, that I want people to know. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying, I know everything that they do. I know how they run off. I know the things that, that catch them off guard. I know the things that scare them. I know the things that worry them. I know the things that they're concerned about. I know their failings. I know their history. I know everything about them. And yet I love them and called them my own and I am their shepherd and laid down my life for them. It also kind of reminds me, if I'm honest, of my mother, right? And probably of your, your mothers too, who know everything about you, right? Know everything from your dirty diapers to your failing to the things you got grounded for to the things that are beautiful about you to the things that are, 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 are less than favor, uh, savory about you. And they say, I love you, I care for you, I'm here for you every moment of the way. That's what God says to us too. Right? I know them, and I lay down my life for them. And then he gives us this great promise. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Which again, reminds me of a good parent who just doesn't let his child, his sheep, his sheep you know, out of his sight or her sight, says, I love them, I care for them, I watch over them. Right? That's what it means for us to have a good shepherd, to know his word, and to live by it. And I pray that as you kind of continue to grow in your faith, uh, whether you're young or old, that your pursuit would be to know the voice of the Lord. That just like your mother or your father, you can recognize it in a moment. That when the word of God speaks, you say, I know that voice. That's the voice of my good shepherd who has loved me with his life. Would you join me with me together in prayer? Gracious Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to be our good shepherd. We pray that we would find full satisfaction in him. And God, we pray that by your spirit, we would grow to know and live in the truth of his word. In your name we pray, amen.